and how hard we have to work to earn it. And message compression ends up being a big, big part of that. You get maybe 10 seconds of somebody's attention initially, and you need to earn the next 30 seconds to go from there. So yeah, that's a, a good goal for this session. Okay, anybody else want to put something in the chat about what they'd like to get from today's session? We're just going to give it another one or two minutes and then we'll uh, we'll kick it off. And how hard we have to work to earn it and message. But I want to make this as useful as possible for you. You get maybe 10 seconds of somebody's attention initially and you need to earn the next 30 seconds to go from there. So yeah, that's a, a good goal for this session. Okay, hey, anybody else want to put something in the chat about what they'd like to get from today's so, session? So, Anjani, uh, one should or two we go ahead and uh, roll? Do you want to give people one and more minute to join, or you think this is a uh, good point to make start? This as useful as possible for you. You get maybe 10 seconds of somebody's uh, attention initially. Just give me a moment. Uh, uh, I think uh, just give yeah. another. So, yeah, yeah a, we should start. We should not wait for people. Anyway, we are recording. so. There are many a time okay. people uh, hey, anybody uh, else later and then something they can the watch the video. Echo. Echo. So Let's let's I'm address kind of the a lot of echo in the room so right away because uh, yeah, I'm not your usual there we go. speaker. Great. Okay, so you might think technical people don't need to understand messaging. Well, that's true, as long as you never want to get customers, like you never want to actually sell your products or start a startup, start a business of your own. As long as you never want to get funding, because messaging is super important for getting investment. And finally, you know, maybe you're not a startup entrepreneur, um, but you don't have to understand messaging if you never want to get promoted. Because you have to be able to communicate your own value very tightly to your boss and your boss's boss if you want to advance in your career. And day to day, that communication skill comes in very handy with your coworkers as well. So there are some really good reasons why, as a technologist, you very much would want to understand messaging. So why are you here? What are you hoping to get from today? Now, some of you already put that in the chat. Uh, if you haven't, uh, go ahead and put that in the chat now, or if you don't want to share it, just write it down for yourself. But it's, it's good to have a sense of what is it that I want from today? What, I, what do I want to get out of a session on messaging? And then you'll know at the end if you got it or not, or if there's more you need to do. And we can talk about that too. So let's dive in to what you're going to learn today. So you're going to learn a number of things, but three core things. You're going to learn how messaging turns just raw information, raw data into meaning. So like this might be the equivalent of the difference between big data and actually deriving business intelligence and insights from it, for example. You're going to learn, once you have a notion of a story, three easy tests to determine if the story you tell today is actually helping, if it's sales worthy. And then the bulk of our time we're going to spend on using a technique that I've refined and developed called the message matrix to sharpen your particular message. And as a bonus, in order to do that well, we're going to talk about differentiation and how you can really screw it up, or conversely, how you can do it well and appropriately. So let's crack on. Now, I've been doing this kind of work for a long time. Uh, I've been a chief marketing officer of both a public company and a large Microsoft partner. But I started my career in a very different way, uh, with a bachelor's in psych which led to getting interested in computers at Cornell, which led to an MBA and a job at Business Objects. But I took some time off to be a songwriter and realizing just how tightly you have to compress and structure your creativity to get a pop song that conveys a message in just a few minutes really, really helped uh, ultimately with the 20 year career I've had in enterprise software, which uh, you know went on into a vice president role at Oracle 
doing consulting and messaging for Microsoft and Cisco, and a lot, a lot of startups over the past X number of years. So that's how I came to be doing this. Now, what is, what is this? What are we doing in messaging? A lot of what we're doing is we're working with the limitations of the human brain and the limitations of the attention other people have for us. And if you wanna know just how limited that is, here's a quick test, because we're all human beings. We all have the same basic wiring. So I'm gonna ask you to take a 90 second attention test right now. Okay, now I don't know if you heard the audio for the, that video. If you didn't, it doesn't matter. What I want you to do is just type in the chat, yes or no. Yes, I saw the gorilla, or no, I didn't see the gorilla. And as the researcher was talking about, about 50% of people seeing a video like this for the first time do not see the gorilla. So don't feel bad if you didn't. I don't think I okay. did either. Now, I don't know if you heard the and audio for the did that see video. If you didn't, it the doesn't matter. So what do we, okay, so several people saying yes, several people saying no, this is a pretty observant group. But what does this tell us about human attention? What it tells us is that the, there's what the eye sees or the ear hears, and then there's what the brain can attend to at any given time. And that is a lot smaller. That aperture of attention is very, very narrow and it doesn't last for long. And so this is what we're working with when we're trying to message to somebody is we're working with this, trying to get into this very, very limited aperture of attention. And we consistently overestimate how much attention people have available to pay to us. And the ways we try to cut through the noise technologically, like social media is a great example of this, they very quickly become more and more and more noise. It becomes overwhelming. And so the solution to the attention problem is not something new. It's something very, very old. Because whatever technology we're using, our brains are still ancient. So what do we need? We need a story. Uh, a story usually has three components. There's a once upon a time, or if you're McKinsey, you call it situation. There's a big bad wolf, or if you're McKinsey, you call it the complication, the conflict. And then there's happily ever after, which ideally in a sales scenario would involve your product or service, and that's called a resolution. Some sales methodologies call it different things, but the Brothers Grimm had this nailed down like 300 years ago. You need a story. And a story time, serves a whole lot of purposes situation. Um, there's a in communicating your value. But one really important one company. is it reduces the number of cognitive chunks. It reduces the number of things people have to retain in their limited brains. 
So instead of 40 pearls, instead of 40 pieces of random data that they have to keep track of, if you put the right string through there, even though it's a half a cent worth of fishing line, this becomes one necklace. This is very easy for people to get a hold of. It's also very easy for them to understand. It's very easy for them to buy. So your job when you have 40 pearls is to knit them into a necklace. That's what a good story or a good uh, message does. So here's the first interactive exercise. Uh, and we can unmute for a couple of people who are brave enough to, to say it out loud. You can put it in the chat. But what I want to ask is, if you are in a business, and it, whether it's your own business or whether it's a, a business that you work for, um, how do you describe your value prop today? Like if you had like one or two sentences to describe your value story today, your message today for your business, what would it be? If you're not in a business, um, you know, use, use perhaps your own personal value prop that you would use to go get your next job. So um, if it's possible, um, Johnny, can we unmute for a moment so that uh, a couple of people can actually say their story and uh, yeah. otherwise you can put it in the chat? Yeah, obviously, um, it's all about interaction today. So, yeah. Great, um, great. Well, why, don't, why don't we start with yours? Why don't you get so, us going? Okay, so uh, so for me, uh, can you repeat the question? I was sorry, I was typing something. Sure. Write down how you pitch your business value prop today. Okay, so uh, for us, it's like uh, we have to connect with the uh, uh, potential audience uh, who is there. Once we connect with the potential audience, second thing is uh, we try to pitch in. Uh, we try to understand the the business proposition or or what what a specific area is uh, uh, my my customer or potential customer uh, is going to uh, actually working on. Who are the competitor and how you mm -hmm. actually uh, handle those competitor. What is the value uh, that he is getting out of the business today? And what is the value if I if I pitch in with a new uh, idea? And uh, what is the value I'm going to give him uh, with the time? So that's the more primary important thing. And obviously, once once you talk about the value, so uh, the with the value, uh, the investment and the ROI also comes into the picture. So we try to focus there. Okay, well, let's let's get tighter. Let's assume for a moment you don't know that much about this customer and you don't have a lot of chance to do discovery. So yeah. you've got a cocktail party pitch or you've got an elevator pitch. Yes. What would you, you know, multi-cloud for you is, like, g give me that in one sentence or two. So, you uh, know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a one sentence, it's, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm going to, uh, like, I'm, I'm representing multi-cloud for you. And we are great in cloud computing business. We support the latest and greatest in cloud. And what we can help you is like you, uh, uh, we can help you. Uh, the, the best thing is like we can help you on the frugal uses of the cloud, and especially around the multi-cloud domain, which is which is now the need of the day. Okay, terrific. So that's what if we you... need, and we need it in like ten words, fifteen words. Um, really, really short, sharp, and tight. So, somebody else, what's what's the what's the value prop for your business today? Uh, can I can I pinch in this? Hi, this is this is Deera Singh here. Um, I am uh, one of the partner with Multi Cloud as well. I mean, I'm uh, I'm a co-founder. I would put it this way. Uh, hi, hi, Jeff. Hi. Uh, yeah. so quick, quick point. I wanted to just make it. See, the Multi Cloud is, of course. The, the name itself talks about the uh, technology. We all know that. Uh, but the main main punchline, if you ask me, I would say that it's it's something which connects the people with the technology. That's what I call my company. That's what I pitch as my company for the multi-cloud. Um, one liner, I would say, if you ask me. Okay, great. So you've just, you two have just demonstrated something really important because you're, you're two principals in the company and uh, you've just given me two different pitches. Now that's not always bad, but there should be one single clear melody that everybody knows. And uh -oh. this is not just you. I'm not calling you guys out. Uh, uh, but what I'm saying is this is a very, very normal issue. 
So uh, let's. I would let's like to add going. in here. So I would like to yeah. add in here. So okay. Obviously, now, uh, okay, but I don't want to take up all the time on multi clouds pitch. I want to make sure we're teaching people how to okay. pitch. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So so why don't we why don't we go on because we'll work on multi clouds uh, offline. Um, let's. Uh, will somebody else tell me their one sentence or two sentence pitch for their business today? Can I? Can I? Yes, please. Uh, as for me, a value prop should be something that uh, reflects the motto of your company, and it should have like it. It should have the motto that or its social value, whatever value you're giving back to the society. It should have that and the motto of your company. Right. So what I want then is for you to give me that for your company. What's the one sentence value pitch for your company today? Try out. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, uh, I am the CEO of Blockchain Kids. It's not a company. It's basically like a program. Got it. So I would say that the punchline or the value prop for my company is that our pro our motto is to eliminate child trafficking from the world. And to do so, we are taking the path of technology, and we are learning different technologies that we can implement. Great. Okay. Good. So we've had a couple of demonstrations of how people uh, describe their value prop today. And those of you that didn't speak or put yours in the chat, you still have one, hopefully. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is evaluate that story, uh, that, that short value pitch. And we're going to do that on three different dimensions. And it's really just a yes, no on each of these dimensions. You're going to test your story against the following criteria. The first and most neglected in technology is clear, which is not do people think you're fabulous, but do they actually understand what the heck you are, what you're talking about at all? The second is compelling. If they understand what you're talking about, do they see it as valuable? Not a little valuable, but like powerfully valuable. Like I have to act, I have to do something about this. This solves a problem I have. And then the last one is consistent. Do customers see it everywhere? And that goes to do people hear the same thing from one person as another? Do they hear the same thing from a salesperson as they see on the website? Does it build that kind of drumbeat of consistency and credibility? So what I want to ask you, and we're, not, we're only going to give you just a, a couple seconds to jot down the answer. You can think about it more later. Is, is your short value prop pitch today, is it clear? Do people understand it? Is it compelling? Do people respond to it powerfully, like they want it? And is it consistent? Will they hear the same thing from different people? Will they say the, see the same thing on your website? So I'm not going to ask you to respond. I'm just going to ask you to know for yourself, is your story clear, compelling, and consistent today? If it is, fantastic. If it's not, you're not alone. In fact, you're in the majority. So we have to ask ourselves, why is this so hard? And what the heck do we do about it? Well, one of the reasons it's hard is like they used to say in the old spy movies, you know too much. Um, you naturally have a lot of information and detail about your solution. And you have the whole mental journey that you went on to get there. And your customers weren't there for any of that. So the natural re uh, assumption is we assume too much about what people know. We assume too much about how interested they are. We assume too much about how much detail they will tolerate. And we tend to put everything in to our pitch, even if we're trying to bring people to a very simple conclusion. Now, what do we do about that? Well, we have to force it down. We have to boil it down. We just have to if we want to be understood, if we want to sell. And the message matrix is a discipline structure for boiling your unique value of your business or yourself as a, as a person even, as a worker, to simple messages that sell. And the structure is simple and brutally consistent. There is perhaps a hundred words in the entire thing, and the fewest are the most important. There's a positioning statement. That is one sentence long, expresses your core value in one sentence. There are three key messages that slice up that value and support it. And then there are nine proof points, three each, 
which prove that you're not full of crap when you claim that you actually do these things that you've stated. That's it. That's all there is. That doesn't mean that's all you're ever going to say. But once you, but, but when it is time to talk about yourself and your solution, that's normally what you're going to say first. That means this entire thing fits on literally one slide. You're not going to show a customer a slide that looks exactly like this. It's going to be too information dense. But the entire message matrix ultimately boils down and fits on one slide, which is why I don't get paid by the word. This works powerfully for marketing, whether, whether you have a big marketing department or whether you're it for your company, because everything works together. You know, the, all of your material is going to be reflective of each other. It's also really good for sales because even though sales needs to do the kind of discovery that the multi-cloud guys were talking about, that kind of exploration of customer pain, there's still a core identity, a core melody of who you are that has to be a part of that, unless you're going to completely re rework your offering every time for every customer. So this actually works really, really well for sales. Now, what is in this structure? Well, there's the positioning statement, and this is the hardest, and this is the most important. It's one sentence, and it's the existential statement about why you're offering your business, whatever it is you're promoting, has a right to exist. And it goes, blank is the blank that blanks. Name of your business is the category, that's the kind of thing that you are, that provides some unique, powerful benefit or unique differentiator. For example, when I was doing the marketing for one of Oracle suites, Oracle Advanced Procurement, that's the name, is the procurement software, that's the category, that dramatically cuts all supply management costs. It's a big claim, and I haven't proved anything yet. But in about 10 words, I've made a claim that just about anybody could understand. And if they challenge me on it, that's actually great because that takes me down to the next level, which is the key messages. So you made one huge claim of benefit or differentiation. Now you're going to split that claim into three slices. You're going to slice that pizza value in three. For example, if I say I drastically reduce all your supply management costs and somebody says, well, that's a big claim, I can say, well, you've got three kinds of supply management costs in this procurement person. You've got your goods and services you buy, we'll, we'll reduce the cost of that. You've got your process costs of so sourcing suppliers and cutting POs, we will reduce that and we will improve your compliance so people aren't ripping you off so much and you'll save money there too. So I haven't still proven anything, but I've divided the problem into three big buckets, which I will then address with proof points. And proof points turn what might otherwise be boring features into fascinating capabilities because now they prove something the person has demonstrated they actually care about. For example, if they care only right now about compliance, I don't need to show them technical details about the other two. I only need to explain to them my compliance features. And they'll listen all day to those because those actually meet a need they have. So it's very different giving this information at the right time when the customer has actually followed your mental map than it is to just blurt it all out at once. Now, why are there only three of all these things? You've noticed there's one positioning statement, there's three key messages, and then there's only three proof points for each, even though your product might do 100 things. Why is that? Well, that is because basically nobody remembers the fourth stooge. People can hold about three things in their brain at once without working too hard at it. So everybody, you know, a lot of people can remember Larry, Moe, and Curly, the three stooges, but most people can't remember Shemp, the fourth stooge. And if you put a fourth or a fifth thing into people's brains, what happens is they'll either lose something or they'll lose everything. They'll either forget some of what you said so that they have room in your, their brains for about three things, or they'll forget everything you said. It's not impossible for us to remember more than three things, but it's impossible for us to remember more than three things without working harder then you want to make your customer's brain work. So you want to set it up for them to be very easy to remember everything that you said. 
So the basic structure of the message matrix is really as simple as that. It's one positioning statement, three key messages, usually benefits or differentiators, and then three proof points for each. But there's an additional trick here that you have to know before you can build one. And that is you have to know how to use differentiation correctly because people misuse differentiation all the time. You have competitors, you want to be different than those competitors, but you got to do it the right way and you got to do it at the right time. So if I were Henry Ford 120 years ago showing you, maybe you're a farmer somewhere, the first car that you've ever seen, I should not go up to you and say, hi, I'm Henry Ford and you should buy my car because it has a more efficient carburetor than a Chevrolet or, you know, a, a, a Honda. I would be completely missing you in that because you're still using a horse. You have no idea what a Chevrolet or a Ford is. So what should I do instead? I should be explaining to you the benefits of having any car, the category versus having a horse, which is what you're doing today. So if people don't know what kind of thing it is you're selling at all, then sell the category, sell the benefit of the category, don't sell your brand. On the other hand, if they know what a car is, but they don't know what who you are, your Hyundai in the 1980s going into the US market, then just help them understand that you are a car. Help get yourself into consideration, just get yourself into the mix. If you are Mercedes or Tesla today, everybody already knows what a car is. And all you really have to explain to them is why the unique differences of your car make it more worthwhile than somebody else's car. So focus appropriately. The most common error people make when they're messaging is they differentiate from direct competitors when they should actually be educating people about why the general kind of thing that they make is better or why that's better than the way people are operating today. So even though the positioning statement and the rest of the message matrix is one consistent structure that basically always works the same, the output you get from it is extremely different according to what people understand already about your market. So if we were back in that you know, first time you've seen a car 120 years ago scenario, what Henry Ford should do is they, he should say, Ford is a horseless carriage. That's the category. Help you understand what kind of thing it is. And it outperforms animal-based transportation. That's the benefit. That benefit is not differentiating against other cars. It's differentiating against what Jeffrey Moore calls market alternatives, how you are doing things today. On the other hand, the Oracle example I gave you was going into a market where Ariba was already the dominant procurement software. So we said Oracle Advanced Procurement, name of the product, is the procurement software, simple category that people are already shopping for, that dramatically cuts all supply management costs. We were not trying to differentiate so much as we were just trying to make a big claim and get into consideration. On the other hand, if you are already a leader in a well-known market, as this company, was, uh, Roadmaster was, for example, in the market of providing weather data to uh, agencies that put salt on roads in the wintertime, then we're already a leader. All we really have to do is claim that leadership and then back it up with differentiators. And key messages. So the first thing you have to understand if you're gonna do messaging, excuse me, yeah, with that, is where am I? What do people already know about my market, my category? And what do they already know, if anything, about me? So with that in mind, we don't have a ton of time, but I do want to take a few minutes to just try to draft a first whack. You're going to work on this more on your own, but just draft a first whack at your positioning statement. Name is simple. Just write down the name of your company, the name of your offering, the name of your organization, the name of your product, whatever it is you're trying to promote. Category is primarily navigational. So, you know, if you are making a car, just say it's the car. 
right? Or it's the cloud software or the procurement software or the internet of things, whatever it is. And then the hard part is what is that one big benefit or one big differentiator on which you're gonna hang your entire business? What is gonna legitimately grab people's attention in 10 seconds and earn you the 30 seconds that you need to state your key messages. So let's just take a minute or so silently right now to work on that. And if you come up with yours and you can, just go ahead and type it into the chat. Now, just so you know, as you're working on this, coming up with this is the crux of what is often a full two day executive workshop session. So don't feel bad if you don't come up with the perfect one in one minute. But you have a little more structure now and you know just how compressed this has to be. So go ahead and take your shot at it. It's a good starting point. And then at the end of this call, I'll also provide you with a longer video version of this material that you can go through to give you a little bit more detail if you want to continue to work further on it on your own. You can also contact me and I'll send you a questionnaire that will help you do further self work on this, or uh, you can connect with me to request a free consultation. But for today, just take your shot. Name of your business is the category that provides one big benefit or differentiator. And I'm gonna give you just about 45 more seconds. If you finished with yours, go ahead and pop it in the chat. If you haven't, no problem. Hey, great. I see one from multi-cloud. Multi-cloud for you. Multi-cloud data science and software product consultancy. That's that. Okay, that's good. There's still work to do on the benefit side, but what I like about that is you, you've firmly hit clear. I understand what you are. Um, there's some additional work we can do on compelling, but this is an excellent start. Okay, I'd love to see one or two more. There we go, Blockchain Kids. Thank you, Anju. Is the program that brings tech and a social cause, eliminating the cause. I suspect there's more on that. But yes, that's, that's a really strong start. I think the sentence maybe got caught up a little bit as far as eliminating the cause of what. But I, I, I can clearly see, Anju, where you're going and it's a very good direction. Okay. Uh, I would I would encourage other guys to type in, yeah. Okay, of child trafficking. Perfect. Okay. Key to success recruitment in solution in recruitment solution to help select quality resource. Okay, great. Yeah, a little little bit of tightening up on that. But yes. Uh, and and I, I'm also trying to in parallel trying to look at the live sessions if some comment has come up. So we'll Oh, yes, see if anybody else has chimed in. Sure. Yeah. Consulting services, providing the solution to fix the major existing pain point through a prototype. Okay, great. Good start. Uh, Diraj, there's, there's a bit of work yet to be done on that in, in, in clarity, but I can see the direction that you're going and the idea of doing things through a prototype, getting going very quickly, solving the pain point. Um, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. Okay, good. good. Uh, Digi HR, see me, is the consultancy the that virtualizes HR and virtual management using AI. Yes, and you know, they're, they're still tightening up to do, but you, see me, you've really grasped the essence of the exercise. You know, you're really grappling with this to express your value in a single sentence. And then we would, we would tighten that up and, and make it more punchy and then go on to the three key messages. And I wish we had time to go on to the three key messages today but we, we really do not. And I want to leave just a little time for questions if we have it. 
So let me just end by just talking to you about when you might want to seek help in this exercise. I open source my tools. You're welcome to watch my videos and work on this on their own. There can never be too much clear messaging in the world. But the time that people seek help from someone like me, one is uh, the problem is, is information hoarding. It can be really hard to leave any of your value out. So some people will make a sentence that has 100 words in it or just you know, they can express their value in a thousand words, but not 10. Uh, so it's easier for an outsider to cut than for you. Um, very often it's tempting that whatever worked with one customer, then that becomes our new message and we add that on and we talk to the next customer about it. It's what we call the chameleon on plaid problem, We're changing all the time. And, you know, finally, too many cooks. You know, if you're in a multi-person business, chances are you're not the only one whose opinion has to be taken into account here. Multiple stakeholders will have strong views, and sometimes you need a, a cat herder or a lion herder to drive consensus. And it's easier for that person to be an outsider because sometimes we just can't solve our problems with the same mindset we used when we created them. You just, sometimes just need an outside perspective. So that, those are some of the reasons that businesses large and small might bring in an outside messaging consultant like myself. To work. So what I want to leave you with before we use any minutes we have for questions is less really is more. You turn a message matrix on its side, it looks like an arrowhead, a point going into that tight aperture of attention and hopefully then expanding it over time to get people into your funnel, down the pipeline and ultimately into a sale or an investment. So less really is more. So I urge you with the same diligence that you use in your technology work to go and create your less, to really get your message clear and sharp and tight because there's probably nothing that will help grow your business more in more different ways than a short, sharp, clear message. So less is more, go create your less. And so um, I'll, I'll throw it open for, ha for questions and uh, you see some housekeeping items here. And then at the end, I'm going to give you your secret code or actually, I don't have it handy. I may ask Anjani to come on and give the secret code. Uh, can we just open up the audio quickly for a couple of questions? I know we're, we're probably just about at time. Yep. Uh, yeah, anyone, any question, uh, please ask with Jeffrey. Uh, and Jeff? Yes. Is, is that okay if I call you Jeff? This Please is, do. Yeah, this is, again, the mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Your audio is breaking up a bit. Can you ask your question again or put it in the chat if it doesn't work? Oh. 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 Um, I, in, in U.S., I've been called the right. Um, yeah, Duras, okay. My real pronunciation is Oh, got it. Sorry. Okay. No, I would just, uh, yeah. Can you hear me well now? Go ahead. I can. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have a quick question. What do, you th what do you think is the best approach? I mean, what's the best way to approach the client? Like, uh, keep on pawning them? Like, what's the best approach? I mean, what's the best way to approach the client? Like, un I mean, if you're trying to just pitch yourself, what's the best approach do you think? Well, there, there's not a single answer to that because it, 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 it depends a lot on things like market size, et cetera. You know, if, if you, uh, account-based marketing is very popular right now if you have a small enough number of potential clients that you can actually identify who they are. Like for example, one of my current clients, they need to get to product managers at established enterprise well, businesses there, in three verticals, that, which it, is insurance, consumer finance, and uh, consumer health. And that's a pretty defined group of people, especially if you constrain it geographically, like companies in the United States. There's probably three to 5,000 of those people, period. So it's possible to actually find out who they are and then to market specifically to them and specifically to their interests on channels like LinkedIn. Um, if you don't have identification that's that tight, then you have to do some different work and you're going to need to kind of throw yeah, some, some breadcrumbs on the water that would be attractive to the kind of people that you're trying to reach. 
Um, and I am a big fan of content marketing where you try to actually provide some information of value to them, whether they're in the sales process or not. That can be more of a long-term play, but you know, re research, reports, interviews you've done with people that yield insights that would be relevant to that client. Um, you know, a lot of that these days can be done through video. So those, those are the kind, that's the kind of marketing I like, especially on business to business, because in business to business, usually there are fewer transactions and they're of higher value versus consumer. So, you know, honestly, um, you know, feel free to email me some more specifics about your situation and I'll try to give you some feedback because it is a question that literally has no single answer. It's an it depends question. I understand. If I know a little and more, I, think, I can give you a better I, response. Right, and I think I got the gist of it. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to say that uh, first, we need to understand the client before we actually try and reach out to them. Yes, to but not the exactly. individual client necessarily, the kind of client, because it, it, if you're going to one person and trying to understand everything about them, that's sales. If you're trying that's to efficiently reach a bunch of them, you look for groups of people who by role or company or industry have common characteristics and you market to the common characteristics and that's marketing. Got it. Thanks. Other questions, please. Uh, hello, sir. Yes. Uh, I have a question. If, uh, like, when we are making the punchline of your company, should you follow this step? Like, first, you should tell. Uh, is following this, uh, the this, uh, this step that I'm telling right now. First, you should uh check the why factor, then the how, then what. Is this a healthy, pra healthy practice that you should do with your punchline? Um, e yes, it is. You won't always be able to get all of it into the one sentence. You, you, you basically, you do that mapping work first, you know, like why, you know, who would want it? Why would they want it? What does it do? Them? All, all of the, whatever model you're using for your what, why, and how, go ahead and do that. And then think about what part of that needs to be distilled and transmitted in that very, very short, sharp message. Another piece of pre-work to do, um, which you may be doing in the course of that why and how is of the problem statement. If you can identify a pain that your potential customers have, um, and, and then that flows very naturally into your solution. Uh, that, for you, in your model, that's probably the why. So I would do all of that work, um, get it all <laughs> written down as best you can, and then think about, okay, out of that, how do I distill the part that's most important for people to hear first into a clean problem statement and a clean positioning statement and three key messages that you can deliver in, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. Um, so I think that, that what you're talking about is vital. And then once you have that thing, you just fill it down to your message. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I think we have time for perhaps uh, one more question. Oh, I see one. How to change neutral negative perception to positive ones, specifically when we're not meeting them in COVID time? Okay, that's a great, great question. Uh, so what I would say about that is a couple of things. One, um, this is an extraordinary time to either earn or waste brand goodwill. So the way I think of this right now, and this is, you know, even though we're not meeting people in person, is helping is the new selling right now. And you may not be able to earn as much revenue right now directly as you did previously, at least for a while, but when recovery comes, the goodwill you earn today is really gonna power you in the recovery. So what I would say is in your marketing, in your communication, in your business practices, come up with ways to be helpful to your customers and potential customers and prospects right now, whether or not they're currently buying from you. And that's not free. That takes some effort and, and often some, you know, spending some money. But um, the companies that get it right 
that actually find ways to provide helpful information or helpful resources to their customers that help them adapt to this crisis is what's going to help your business be powered into goodwill and the recovery. I, I think about there was a um, there's a French um, perfume conglomerate LMBH that instead of shuttering their factories, they started making hand sanitizer and giving it away to French health organizations. Um, that wasn't free for them, but it earned them massive goodwill. And when people are in the market for luxury perfume again, which may not be right now, because so many of us are stuck at home, um, you know, they're going to look differently on that brand um, that, that really pitched in kind of in wartime and, and helped their customers and helped the public. So I think that what you need to be thinking about is how within my resources and my budget can I really check in with and be helpful to my customers right now and even my prospects right now so that when they're buying again, I'm already their friend. I'm already a trusted person for them or trusted company for them. I'm already in their minds. So there's a lot of detail behind that. And again, if you email me some details of your situation, I'll do my best to respond. But that's the spirit I would go with. Thanks, thanks, Steph. Thanks very much. Yeah. And, uh, I definitely would like to email you uh, regarding the specific, uh, you know, situation I am in. Hopefully, I'll get some response from you. Great, great. Yeah. So you can see my email, Jeffrey at messagemechanics.com. You can connect yep. to me on LinkedIn. You can okay. go to messagemechanics.com. Um, so I think you know I'd love to actually answer more questions, but I think we're we're at or over the end of our time. So. Um, if you would uh, take us home and give people the secret code that they need to get their certificate. Yeah, uh, definitely, Jeffrey. And uh, what, what we understood is this session has been a fantastic one for us to understand. And as you said, like if you go on our website, we have ideally, obviously I was not prepared to answer your question at that point of time. I was, I was doing a lot of thing in parallel and uh, of I course. was caught in an awkward mm -hmm. <laughs> position to sure. answer out. But if you go on our website, you will see the messaging is being structured a little similar to like there is one uh, hard uh, one is the the base page start with one and there are three messages below and then that's how we have categorized the website on multi cloud. So Terrific. Com. And the second thing that we learned today and we we are we are thinking loud among ourselves among partner that whether we are doing good if we are if we are doing it free this evangelism work that we are doing it free for the past almost four or five months. And now we see that it's worth it, the way you have said. Like it, it, is, it has definitely earned a lot of goodwill to us. There are more than 1,000 yes. people who have took certificate. And there are more than like 100,000 reach that we have got. The base that we have got, got among technologies is all because of what we do today, help people uh, to learn, help people to earn, and, and, and make them better uh, technologists, better human, make them be prepared for the worst and, and be ready for what they do. So it, it's a it's a great crisis. example. Yeah, it's a great example. Helping really is the new selling right now. Yeah, and I'm I'm a big fan of that kind of marketing in all times. But in yes. this crisis, it can make the difference between the brands that are going to make it and the brands that won't. Yeah, so I'm giving so, the uh, um, I'm giving the, the code. Yeah. So yeah. just go into your that pink. I, I look like a pink. Just give me a moment. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I think someone should go on mute uh, because it will be difficult for people to understand. Okay, so uh, to go to the, like to, to claim the certificate, uh, you have to use the link uh, directly type into the browser https www.5thir.com. You don't need to type in everything. Uh, it's enough. HTTPS colon double slash www.5thir.com. Jeffrey, you can do it parallelly. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'll go on the browser and do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I will, I, I will just do that. Straight on the browser. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll share it as soon as I have it up. Okay, www.5thir. Right, com. Okay, got it. That's 5thindustrialrevolution.com. Yep, and, and then uh, mm -hmm. once you are there, put
put your name, email, phone number, and then once you go in the second page, it will ask you for secret code. And now is the time to announce that code. It's all caps as usual. A, A for apple, B for black, five, numeric five, that's number five. Five, numeric five, M, M for Mumbai, L for L'Oreal, L for London. So A for apple, B for black, five, the numeric, the number five, M for Mumbai, L for London. A, B, five, M, L. The secret code is A, B, five, M, L, all in caps. A for apple, B for black, five, the numeric five, the number five, M for Mumbai, L for London. Okay, great. So hopefully everybody got that secret code and you can see again on my screen how easy it is to go to that URL and go ahead and get your certificate. Yeah. And I really want to thank you all for stretching a bit and attending something that might be a little outside of the normal programming. But I think that you'll find it valuable as entrepreneurs, valuable as NGO leaders, um, and just valuable as technologists and just valuable in your career. So thank you so much for joining. And um, I look forward to hearing from some of you by email. Yeah, of course, Jeff. It was really interesting and very knowledgeable, especially for people like us. It was very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Have a good night. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jeff.